Now, time has come that I introduce a term to you and that term is entropy. Now, entropy you might have heard of before, entropy you might have not understood before. The reason is because entropy is a misinterpreted term and generally in books, in your textbook, you'll find entropy to be related as disorder. This is grossly, wholly and fully wrong. Entropy is not related with disorder. Entropy is related with something else. Entropy is related with dispersal of energy. Now don't, I mean, I mean, have the thoughts that we are building on. We have established a statement a moment back that in any kind of spontaneous process, there should be a dif dispersal of energy. The energy must diffuse, the energy must spread out. Now the only criteria to judge whether a process is spontaneous or not is to judge whether the energy is being dispersed in that process or not. That's simple, that's easy. Now I'm defining a term entropy and I'm trying to relate the entropy uh, with uh, spontaneity. You know, suppose in, in, in in high school, you would have studied certain reaction, any chemical reaction, and in that, uh, they they taught you that certain amount of energy is released. Suppose 50 kilojoule, or for that matter, suppose 100 joule of energy is released in this process. Then your tutor told you that because energy is being released, so system is being stabilized, and energy in reactions in which energy is released, those reactions are spontaneous and they would have given you examples like combustion reaction. A lot of energy is released. So once you ignite a small block of piece of coal, the whole block and the whole chunk of coal will catch fire on itself because energy is released in that process. So that process is spontaneous. So this heat, the, the heat energy, the enthalpy, which the delta H, this becomes a parameter to judge whether the reaction would be spontaneous or not or to what extent the reaction is vigorous. If the delta H is very high, there is a high tendency for these A and B to form C and D. So we have a physical quantity. We have enthalpy that judge the extent of the reaction, that judge the tendency of the reaction, not extent, the tendency of the reaction, tendency of A and B to form C and D. If the energy release is higher, then the tendency would be higher and even the spontaneity will be higher. So similar to enthalpy, I'm looking for a physical quantity that if I look at, suppose that quantity is S, if I look at this S or if I look at change in S as A and B form C and D, then this change in S will also give me an idea of a spontaneity of a reaction. Fine. So similar to enthalpy, similar to internal energy, I'm looking for a physical quantity and that physical quantity the change in that physical quantity will give me an idea of whether the reaction is spontaneous or not or what is the tendency of the process to occur. So that physical quantity will be entropy. The name was given by Rudolf Clashes and this entropy was a term coined by him. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see what entropy is. But, but uh, let me remind you of what we are doing. We saw that any process will be spontaneous if energy is being diffused. Now all I have to do is to measure that diffusal of that energy. To what extent that energy is being diffused. If I can measure that to th through any some physical quantity, suppose that, entrop that, that physical quantity is suppose entropy, so I measure change in entropy. So this change in entropy will give me, is supposed to give me, because that's what I'm looking for, is supposed to give me extent of diffusion of energy. This is what I'm supposed to have. If the diffusion of energy is positive, that energy is really being diffused, then delta S will be positive. And if delta S is positive, that implies that reaction will be spontaneous. And that's what I'm looking for. Now, if diffusion is negative, that energy is rather being concentrated, then delta S will be negative. And if delta S is negative, reaction will not be spontaneous. And that's what I'm looking for, whether it will be spontaneous or not spontaneous. From the previous discussion, a reaction is spontaneous if the energy is being diffused. 
now i have a parameter that will measure the extent of diffusion so i just have to look at this delta s so if delta s is positive that means reaction is spontaneous if delta s is negative that means reaction is not spontaneous now we'll see how how to measure delta s just just hold hold on but before that this delta s this s is called entropy so this delta s is change in entropy so entropy from our discussion now we establish will give us the extent of diffusion of energy the dispersal of energy how much energy is is being spread out that is what change in entropy will give you now in books they will tell you and perhaps the teacher will also tell you that entropy is the measure of disorder now that's not true when an energy is being dispersed out maybe disorder will come but this there's a disorder that doesn't mean that energy is being dispersed out suppose i have three markers kept nicely like this now this is more ordered if i keep it in random position this is more disordered now to say that disorder has increased so the entropy has increased sorry that's not right because if entropy has increased that means by our, the way we are constructing our theory that means that energy has been spread out but here in this case no energy has been spread out the amount of elastic energy the amount of potential energy these blocks were having before when they were perfect when they were more ordered is the same when you change this configuration the dispersal of energy hasn't been there the energy is not more spread out so even though you have created a disorder but the energy has not spread it out so the delta s the entropy has not increased for this so mind you entropy is not related with disorder and if you consider this you will never understand what entropy is you will always have a confusion in your head and you will never get a feel of what this entropy thing was so forget this this is a wrong notion this was a concept long back during 18th century when we started to study entropy but with the development of statistical uh, uh, physics the notion shifted from this disorder to extent of diffusion of energy and this is what we understand of entropy presently the extent of diffusion of energy this is entropy okay fine now the task remains how to uh, make it uh, more mathematical and quantifiable delta s now delta s the term i had a need and necessity is the mother of invention the necessity was the requirement was to develop a physical quantity which will mathematically tell me whether the reaction is feasible or not now in that quest i define a term entropy and i am looking forward how to make that a mathematical how to give it a mathematical form so there is a mathematical proof of what i am going to write but without getting into the proof well, first we'll get a feel of why entropy should be defined like that later i'll give you a mathematical proof of why entropy should be defined like that the for time being for a small change in entropy i'm writing ds this is entropy represented by s so ds is a small change very small change in entropy now ds is defined as dq by t now this dq is reversible we'll see what it is don't panic this is the definition of entropy ds is dq reversible by t now ds is the change in entropy with the a small change in heat exchange dq is the heat exchange during this process for a small step in that process dq will be the small change in the heat keeping the temperature constant because with a very very small change the temperature won't change sufficiently the system is large so assuming the temperature to be constant for that small change or for the small exchange of heat for that small exchange dq dq by t will give you small change in entropy now we will see why it should be like this but before that mind you this dq is dq reversible dq reversible means the change in the heat or the heat exchange during reversible process 